podcasting from the great city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, home of the cheesesteak. This is the TeacherCast Podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Bradbury, and welcome to another episode of the TeacherCast Podcast from TeacherCast.net. The TeacherCast Podcast is a weekly show where we discuss the 21st century technologies that teachers need to utilize in their 21st century classrooms. Today's show is all about Live Binders. Live Binders is basically a three ring binder for the web. You can collect your resources, you can organize them, and you can also present them to the world for everyone to see. And joining us today on the program, we have Barbara Talent and Tina Schneider from Live Binders. How are you doing today? Hello. Hi, Hi we're doing great. I'm Tina. And I'm Barbara. How are Hi, everyone. And you guys are coming to us today from the great state of California? Yes, we're from the Bay Area, San Francisco area. How are things in San Francisco these days? Well, it's great today because I see the sun out. <laughs> Normally, it's as, as cold as anywhere in the winter. How close are you guys to the Golden Gate Bridge? I, on a good day, I'm probably about 20 minutes away. Nice. And a good day being traffic. So I can't see it from here, but anywhere in the city is about a 20 minute drive. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I, I would love to get out there sometime. I know my wife and I are looking at taking a trip out west, and we've got some friends out in California and some family, and I, I would love to go out and see all of that stuff. Yeah, well, come in the fall or the spring. Don't come yeah, in the summer. September. <laughs> October is the best time of year. October is a good time. Does it get hot out there up in uh, Northern California? It, it gets quite warm in September, October. Ooh. Well, actually, if you come to the Bay Area is where it's cold. Anywhere else, it'll yeah. be a hot summer. But uh, just the San Francisco area, it, it just, it's, um, I don't know, it, it just attracts the fog, the heat <laughs> from the valley, and the cold ocean breeze just creates fog here. Nice. Live Binders can be found at livebinders.com. And uh, how long has Live Binders been around? Well, the website launched, our, our alpha launched late 2007. And then we went into beta in 2008, so it's been a few few years. And what was your background before LiveBinders started? Well, I was in software research. I started out as an intern at Xerox Park and down in Palo Alto, and then um, started working for a company called Fuji Xerox, doing research for them. And um, actually, I was working with what they called the first generation of digital natives. These were high school students. that, And it was a very cool project. We wanted to figure out what kind of office software would this generation of game players, digital natives, would be looking at um, using in the office of the future. So I got to work on some pretty cool projects. And that's kind of how I got exposed to the to education and working with teachers and students and bringing in my background with, um, I have a, a master's in conceptual art, and I was totally into digital mediums, and ga- and I thought game playing would introduce a new kind of storytelling. So that's kind of where my background came from. Mm-hmm. And I'm a software person from way back. I've been in the computer industry for over 25 years, and um, CEO of a couple different startups. And uh, so when I met Tina and heard about her vision for a way to make things much, much easier to share resources on the web, I thought it was fabulous. And so I jumped in with her to start the company. I, I, I know there's a huge online community for live binders and everybody so far that's come on the program have been absolutely raving about it and that's why i'm so happy that you guys have taken the time to come on the program today so um you know i can't say enough thank you guys for for popping on here well we're happy to be here we're, we're glad that you found us <laughs> yeah thank you for having us could you give us a little overview um for somebody who hasn't heard about live binders what is a live binder so a live binder is essentially the concept of a three-ring binder for the web. It's finally a place where you can organize everything that you have um, in context. So if you're trying to pull together a quick lesson plan on the stock market, which has been a little scary 
uh, you may have uh, all these links that you want to add uh, into a live binder, but you may also have PDFs on your desktop and other things that you found from other people. And so it's a way to kind of put all those into one place. And then it's up on the web, so it's easy to share with um, your colleagues or your students. And it's also completely paperless. So um, teachers are using it for lesson plans, a paperless the less lesson plans. Um, we've had teachers do uh, paperless science projects. You know, with online learning getting more and more popular, we've, we have, um, in fact, I have some examples of teachers who are doing everything completely online, um, giving assignments, giving instructions, student projects being delivered completely through um, the interface of a binder. So it's interesting what's going on with um, 21st century learning. I, I think you hit it on the head with this being completely paperless. Um, you know, look, walking our listeners here through the interface, it's very clean and it looks just like a three ring binder, as you would imagine, turned on its side. On the top of the page, you have these divider tabs, correct? Mm hmm. And then each divider tab can house several inner divider tabs, I guess you would still call it. And then that can hold websites. And what are some of the other things that you can collect inside your binder? So you can collect videos, you can upload documents, um, upload PDF documents. So you, if you're doing a presentation at a conference, you can upload your conference presentation there and then all the links in the rest of the tabs. So you can upload a PowerPoint file? You can upload a PowerPoint file. We, uh, we recommend that people uh, print it to PDF first because if you upload it as a PowerPoint it won't show up inside the binder because a browser can't show a PowerPoint inside of it. But uh, if you upload it as a PDF, a browser can do that. So it will show up exactly inside the binder. So if you're working in PowerPoint or Keynote, the, the idea there is to save it to a PDF, one slide per page, and then we can pop that up there. And now you said videos. Is it? Um, are you linking it to a video site, or would you import the movie directly from your, from your computer? You could do either. You could upload a, a video to the binder, or you. we have a YouTube embed feature, so you can embed just a YouTube video without all the stuff around it inside the binder. So there's no distractions if a teacher wants to use a YouTube video with students. It's a neat idea. I mean, the, the, the cool part about Live Binder seems to be anything that you want, you can, I, I guess the word is curate a little, isn't it? You, you can just make this collection of... of of whatever you want up there. I've seen people do lesson plans. I've seen people do their favorite sports teams. I've seen people make a list of all their apps. What are some of the things that you guys are noticing people um, making binders out of? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with the word curate because uh, it seems to be a, a really big thing right now that there are so many resources online that, you know, everybody isn't, is, is, you know, has the potential to be an expert in a certain area that they're researching. And so as they're going, spending the time to research all these different links and videos and putting it together for a context that means something to them, you know, their friends and colleagues are, are, are going to them to look at their binders as, as this resource place. So it is a kind of a curated document. But, you know, we've seen you know, binders being used for, you know, sharing all kinds of resources on a particular subject to, you know, step-by-step -step tabs that, you know, tell a story about, um, we had one binder where students, you know, explained the Cold War um, based on different aspects of it. Um, we've had other students come along and, you know, talk about the 1940s from music, theater, you know, political, and, and divide that all up with tabs. Oh. And then we've had uh, teachers who have used it for other things as well. Uh, so collecting their favorite recipes or their children's wish lists for Christmas. And these binders, I've noticed when I created my own account, some of them can be personal and some of them can be public, right? So you can create a binder that only you see, and then you can create a binder that your students would want to see. That's correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you could have private binders where only the people who have the access key can view them. 
and then you have public, which is, you know, you're leaving it open for everybody to, to use. So let's talk about how to create a live binder. It's 100 megabytes per account and um, a 5 megabyte maximum file size. So eventually we'll open that up to larger file sizes and larger amounts of data per account, and, and that'll be a, a small annual fee. Okay. And you said it's 100 megs. Now, I can't imagine a lot of people are going over that because most of this is just embedding and, and linking to different websites, right? Exactly. Now, talk to us a little bit about the differences. You have the binder, and then you also have shelves. Um, what's the difference between a binder and a shelf? It's a good question. Uh, binder is, you can basically say it's a collection of documents. It's a collection of links that you want to organize into a context. And a shelf is a way for you to group a bunch of binders together. And can your shelf embed um, other people's live binders? Yes. So let's say, for instance, I was the teacher. I could have my students each sign up for a live binders account. And then throughout the year, they could curate their special topics or their, their assignments, documents, whatever they have. And then as my teacher, as me being the teacher, I could create a shelf featuring each of their live binders. Yes, exactly. I think so that's it's a great um, concept. In fact, it's one of uh, our newest features, and it really came about from listening to teachers and what they needed to do with the binders. Uh, we were seeing teachers actually collect binders within binders, which you can do. And and my demo here that I sent to you is is filled with binders in them. So that was a way they could group a bunch of binders together. So we thought, well, maybe what they needed was a way to customize a shelf and add other people's binders that they wanted to track um, in a shelf format. So that's so now you can create your own shelf, add student binders to it or other people's binders, however you want to organize your bi- your groups of binders. And then you can embed that shelf um, on your web page or your blog site that is so neat. that people coming to your page can check out your library of resources. Now, I, I think one of the best parts about live binders, and, and this is coming from somebody who, again, is relatively new to the website – you guys have some really nice tutorials to, to guide new users in how to use some of these features. Where can we find some of these tutorials? Oh, thank so, you for saying that, by the way. There, there are always a lot of work to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to the homepage and then go to, well, actually click on help in the upper right-hand corner. This has all of our help, and then there's a sub-tab up there that says video tutorials. So if you're a video-style learner, we've done video tutorials on how to, all about tabs and sub-tabs and how to put a binder on your desktop. We have videos on everything. So it's broken up into little pieces so you can take your time learning it. And and they're very, very creative. I, I like them. They're to the point. I was watching them last night, trying to get ready for today, and... I think they're very informative, so very nice job, guys, on that one. Thank you. Let's kind of switch back to the sharing. Um, One of the nice things about having a mobile device, like an iPad, is that you can now take a screen around, a website screen, um, place to place. Could you talk a little bit about how to take live binders on the road with you? Um, What's the best way to share live binders on an iPad, on an iPhone, things like that? Um, so first of all, I love the idea of taking live binders with you, um, and that's a concept that we're we've heard a lot of teachers requesting. We, you can obviously get access to a binder through a browser on your phone or um, on your iPad, but we haven't developed an iPad app yet. So that's really where we're trying to get to on our next development phase is to create an application that makes it easy for users to add content to a live binder. I mean, you can add links. I think we we have a, the live binder it tool, which lets you browse content and then add it to a binder without having to open it. And that is available on your iPad. Um, but we haven't developed the iPad app yet. Is there one coming around the corner? 
Uh, give us two corners. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're, we are definitely working on that. And there's been a, a huge request from, I guess, iPads are really going to be entering the, the school landscape very, very soon. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm looking here again, and I think LiveBinders is such a great tool for both the teacher and the student. I, I, I can easily see a student creating their own LiveBinders account and just putting their subjects in there. Stuff that they've learned in English class, stuff that they're working on in social studies or math class. And the nice thing is it's, it is paperless. You can take it with you from year after year after year. And it's a, it's a nice resource. Um, let's talk a little bit about that curation process. How can you add things to your LiveBinder account? So, yes, as students are also using it for e-portfolios so that they add things to them as they go through time. So that's another use. Yeah, and I thought... Can, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that I thought you you brought up a really some good points about how students are using the binders in the classroom. You know, we have uh, third graders who uh, one teacher described them as creating their own student textbooks. So instead of relying on a traditional social studies textbooks, they're asked to go out and do their own research have it verified by the teachers, and then that binder becomes the way that they study for the the um, the material, which I, I think is very interesting. And then from a teacher perspective, you know, there's no excuse that, you know, you left your paper at home <laughs> or your notes at home because LiveBinders is, is so accessible that way. But I think, you know, you I guess your point is that, you know, how do they add material? What are the many different ways that students can be creating content? Mm-hmm. And there are two ways to do that. One is to launch the editor, and that's within the binder, and you can copy and paste links into it. That's where you would upload your PDF or your Word documents or your movie files, small movie files, um, into your binder, and and you can title your tabs and title your binder and, and maybe input some text. And then there's the Live Binder It tool, which is accessible from your iPad, um, it's accessible on your desktop as long as you install. Well, it's not really an installation. It's more about just adding the the bookmarklet tool to your browser. And as you are finding content that you've you know been researching, you just click on that link, and it it gives you all of your binders and even the binders that you're you've been invited to collaborate on. So you can add content to your binders and the binders that you know you collaborate with other students with. So. I can add web pages by going through my bookmarking bar on my Safari browser, my Internet Explorer browser. And yes. that brings up a screen that allows me to not just add things to my live binders, but I would, but I guess it gives you the option of exactly where in that live binder. So it breaks it down so specifically you can organize things very quickly. Right. So you can either add it as a tab or... Um, we give you a way to find the tab and then insert it as a sub-tab into, into that tab. And let's yes, talk so a little bit about, about... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I'm just going to say, so you can build a binder without ever even opening it uh, very quickly. If you're browsing the web for a whole bunch of things, just add them one, one after another to your binder. And let's talk a little bit about customizing your binder. Can you... Um, put a special icon on it? Can you change the picture of what your binder looks like? How do you creatively promote yourself? Barbara, you yes. want to? So you can upload an image for your binder cover so that your binder cover on the shelf kind of stands out. You can um, use a Flickr image on your binder cover. When you're inside the binder, you can change the colors, the colors of the tabs or the background colors. Uh, so you can customize it that way, too. So kids are going to love live binders because they can co- totally make it unique. I-, I think one of the other features that kids are going to love is when they do find these articles, they can then tweet the articles to their other friends, right? There's a there's a Twitter feature in here? Yes, you can click on Twitter, the Twitter icon inside the binder and tweet out the binder. And does it go, is it just Twitter or what else do you guys so have access to? Twitter, Facebook, Clerk. Uh, there's a Facebook like button on there too. They they provide an email interface, so if they just want to email it, they can do that as well. So can a student uh, curate something and have it automatically email the teacher? 
No, they would need to click on the email link okay. and send it out that way. Excellent, excellent. It looks like you guys have a really neat program. It's free. It's very easily organizable. It's very accessible. It's shareable. You can embed it. The kids are going to love it because it's something that they can study from paperless. They don't have to remember where they put their books or carry things around. And they can share it on Facebook and Twitter with all of their friends. It sounds like it's going to make a great study tool for kids. Um, what is, what's the future of Live Binders? Where do you go from here? Well, I think we covered um, that we, we want to get the iPad app out there as soon as possible. So that's, that's going to definitely be in the near future to get, to get us into people's iPads and on their phones so that they can, you know, as they're using these more and more to find resources and, and share them, they're going to want to edit their binders. And so we're going to provide that tool that way. And then the other thing is, you know, providing more customizable features for our professional users. So the subscription model, so people who want to, you know, have their username or their business name on a URL for for their binders, um, have more storage capability. So we're kind of trying to look look at that avenue as, as being part of the next level of live binders. And then finally, why don't you tell us how to find live binders and uh, where we can find you guys online? Great. So it's um, www.livebinders.com. Our Twitter address is at livebinders. And um, we, we always respond to Twitter questions as well. You can email us at uh, info at livefinders.com. That goes to both Tina and I, and we re- try to respond as quickly as possible to any questions or requests. And we're on Facebook. So it's livebinders.com, livebinders on Twitter, or info at livebinders.com. Yes. Well, Barbara and Tina, thank you very, very much for being guests. Are there any great live binders out there that we can be searching for if we're new to the platform? There's yeah, two. there's there. Go ahead. Okay, there's a couple things. One is there's a top ten. We had a top ten contest, which was kind of fun. So people voted for their top live binders, and so if you go to the site and click on about binders, and then click on voted top ten, you will see those um, top ten binders there, and those are all a lot of fun. But we know that each teacher has a different thing that they're interested in. So it's really great to just go to the site, click on Featured Binders, click on the More Education category, and you can search all sorts of different subjects there. So you can find exactly what you're looking for. Excellent. And, you know, it's nice about the category feature, and and one of our users um, was... uh, articulating this very nicely is that you know when you go to google and you're trying to find math resources or science resources it, you you come up with two million results which is a lot to kind of sift through what's relevant and what's not and he was saying you know he just sends his his clients to live binders um and do a search there through these categories because you're you're going to have people who've already done the research and, you know, sifted through all the material and put them into a context that may be appropriate for you. So I think that's the category and the search aspect of live binders is something that we, we often overlook how valuable that can be to teachers looking for resources. Yes, it's truly curated content there. Excellent, excellent. Well, once again, thank you both for coming on the show. I know it's really early out there in California, but uh, we appreciate your time here. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for having us on. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening to the TeacherCast podcast. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, TeacherCast.net, to your friends and colleagues. We can be found on Twitter at the screen name TeacherCast. Be sure to check out our iTunes channel for TeacherCast podcasts, app reviews that are beneficial to you, the 21st century educator. If you like what you heard, please write us a great review and give us a five-star rating. This has been a TeacherCast production. Join us next time for another edition of the TeacherCast podcast. Mm-hmm.